In a previous video, I showed the computer vision autopilot system that I built for RC Plane and Raspberry Pi 4. The system uses input from a camera to find the horizon and calculate the plane's pitch and roll accordingly. Custom flight controller software keeps the plane level and executes coordinated turns. In this video, I'm going to dive a bit deeper into the horizon detection algorithm that is at the core of this project. The algorithm uses relative brightness of the input image to separate ground from sky, and several additional filters are applied to remove noise and data that can confuse the algorithm. In the GitHub repository, you can find this algorithm in the file entitled find underscore horizon.py. Let's walk through how this program works. This file defines a class called Horizon Detector, which is responsible for all computer vision related tasks. The core method of this class is find underscore horizon. It takes a frame and returns the roll and pitch of the airplane. Additionally, the method returns a confidence score called variance and a boolean to indicate if a valid detection was made. The frame that is provided to the horizon detector should be quite small to ensure good performance. Before calling the horizon detector, I scale the image down a bit. I take the frames from the camera, which is capturing at 640 by 480 pixels, and then crop and scale the image to 100 by 100 pixels. This may seem small, but it's plenty of detail for the program to make accurate predictions. The first step of the horizon detection algorithm is to classify each pixel of the image as either ground or sky. My approach is to use the CV2 threshold function with OTSU's binarization. There are several methods for thresholding in OpenCV. The most sophisticated one, and the one that works the best for my application, is OTSU's binarization. OTSU's binarization does statistical analysis on the image to find an optimal threshold value. Because of this, it's able to accurately separate background from foreground, even in images of varying lighting conditions. OTSU's binarization requires a grayscale image, so I start by converting the provided frame to grayscale. The OpenCV docs state that OTSU's binarization can have trouble with noisy images, so it's recommended to apply a blur before calling the threshold function. In my testing, I didn't see much benefit from applying the blur. The binarization seems to work just as well without it, but just to be safe, I kept it in. Now that the pre-processing is complete, it's time to call the threshold function. This one turned out nearly perfect, although there's a white patch on the ground and perhaps a small black patch in the upper left corner. Minor issues like this can be easily handled by filtering logic later in the algorithm. At this same point in the code, I'm doing some canny edge detection and max pooling operations on the grayscale image. The output of these operations is used a bit later to filter out bad data and improve accuracy. More on that later. Now for the fun part. We now have a well-segmented image of the sky and ground. We can call the cv2.findContours function, which will give us a list of contours in the image. We'll be analyzing these contours and eventually picking out the horizon line. There are several different ways of running the find contours function, two of which I've experimented with at length. In earlier versions of my program, I used the method called chain approx simple. This seems to be the most popular method, and it's what you are most likely to encounter in online resources. This method finds contours only at inflection points. This is nice because it captures the shape of the contour with the minimum number of contour points. In general, this worked well for my program, but over time I found situations where it did not work. In particular, when the horizon is exceptionally flat, this method will return very few points, potentially as few as two. If either of those two points is filtered out later in the algorithm, then it's impossible to find the horizon. For this reason, I began to explore another contour method called chain approx none. This method returns every point along the contour, whether or not the contour is changing direction. At first, this seemed like a bad idea because it would return way more points than I need and potentially slow down the program. However, I realized I could iterate on the list of contours skipping points at a particular step size. In this way, I can get evenly spaced points along the contour without over-representing or under-representing any part of the contour. I did some performance testing on this new method and found that it ran at about the same speed as the old method, so I happily incorporated the new method into my program. The OpenCV contours function returns a list because an image can contain multiple contours. In this context, you can think of each patch of white as having its own contour. 
In an ideal situation, there would only be one white patch, the sky. However, oftentimes there will be bright sections on the ground that appear as white. Because of this, the program sorts the contours by length and assumes the longest one is the sky region. All other contours are ignored. There is some special handling in the unlikely event that there are no contours in the image. This is extremely rare and would only ever happen if the threshold image was pure black. I've only ever been able to trigger this condition by covering the camera lens with my finger. I suppose it might also happen if the camera comes disconnected or some other hardware error prevents the Raspberry Pi from getting video feed. In any case, it's always important to handle edge cases, especially with this project, because when the program crashes, so does the plane. Now that we have the contour points around the sky, it may seem like we're almost done, but there's a bit more filtering to be done to ensure that all the points are valid. First, the points are separated into points that lie on the edge of the frame and points that do not lie on the edge of the frame. The points on the edge are obviously not part of the horizon, but I put them into their own list because they will be useful later to determine if the sky is above or below the horizon, or in other words, if the plane is upside down. Next, we make some calculations about where the horizon is expected to be in the current frame, based on where it was in the previous frames. If the horizon was not successfully detected in previous frames, this extra filtering step will be skipped. I mentioned earlier that the program does some edge detection. At this point, we use those edges to filter out points. In short, any point that does not exist along a sharp edge is thrown out. This filter does a great job of removing dark spots that sometimes show up in the sky, as well as lens flare that I encountered while flying at sunset. In the same loop, I also calculate the distance between each point and the expected position of the horizon, and throw away anything that is too far away. In this example, the red points outside of the region of interest are being excluded for two reasons, because they are too far away from the expected position of the horizon, and because they do not exist along a sharp edge. The next section of code only runs if diagnostic mode is turned on. Diagnostic mode creates a visualization of which points were detected, which points were filtered out, and the approximate position of the expected horizon. Essentially, it helps the user understand the decisions the algorithm is making. The horizon detector should not be run in diagnostic mode when it is controlling an actual airplane, since it slows down performance and is unnecessary. Diagnostic mode is only for creating visualizations and troubleshooting issues. Now we have a list of valid contour points that should represent the horizon. I use the NumPy polyfit function to fit a line to the points. This returns the slope and y-intercept of the line, which is then converted into the roll of the airplane. Next, based on the known position of the line and the average position of the edge points, I determine if the plane is upside down. Based on this, the pitch is adjusted. I don't typically fly my plane upside down, but if I do, these conversions would be critical. The variance is calculated by taking the average of the distances of each valid point from the horizon line. If the points are too far from the detected horizon, that means the line isn't very straight, and therefore the detected horizon probably is not the actual horizon. In this case, the isGoodHorizon variable is returned as false, which will tell the flight controller that the horizon cannot be determined. Finally, the PredictNextHorizon function is called, passing along the roll and pitch values, which will be used to help find the horizon in the next frame. The algorithm works well and is able to provide accurate information to the flight controller. However, my testing has revealed a few shortcomings that I will attempt to fix in future versions. For example, when there's a body of water along the horizon, that can cause the program to fail, because the water looks too similar to the sky. Here you can see a lake off in the distance that is causing some problems for the algorithm. One idea to solve this problem is to use a more robust binarization, like a semantic segmentation model. I worry that the Raspberry Pi might not be able to run a semantic segmentation model at the requisite frame rate, but I have yet to explore that. Another issue is that if there are obstacles on the horizon, such as trees, buildings, or mountains, the algorithm may be unable to pick out the horizon. Again, a semantic segmentation model might be able to handle this, or perhaps just a clever filter applied to the contour points. I'll need to spend more time investigating these problems. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see future updates on this project, as well as videos on robotics, aviation, and programming, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.
bottle's good.